Um, hi, Jason. Thanks for helping my project. Uh, could you say a little bit about yourself? Yeah. Uh, hi, Nathan. Yeah. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Um, it's an honor, actually. Uh, never, been, never been asked to do anything like this. Um, but yeah, I'm a software engineer. Um, so I've been, I've been doing that for quite a long time now, about 20 years or so. Uh, prior to that, I was working in the textile industry, strangely. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm based in the UK, near York. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, I've got, what got what so, got you into software? Uh, well, I, I always liked computers. So, like a like a lot of uh, um, young men of the of the eighties, uh, you know, we get into home computing and playing computer games, and then uh, you know that carries on in that sort of early desire to be like a, a home computer programmer, um, writing your own computer games, kind of you know spurs that interest and and uh, yeah, it it's a uh, uh, it, it just carried on from there, really. Uh, I didn't go into it immediately. So it's something that I kind of grew into later on uh, when I, I decided to have a change of career and went to university and and uh, decided to study software engineering. And, and that's that's how I ended up where I am. Do you remember what your first computer was? My first computer? Um, I, I didn't have one actually. It was my sister's. Um, she got it for Christmas. It was a Sinclair ZX Spectrum 48K uh, with a little rubber keyboard. And uh, that was the first one. And I think I was about seven years old when we got that. And um, I remember uh, that the, the, it was my sister's present, but they, uh, my sister and my dad couldn't actually get anything to work on it because it, you had to attach a little tape recorder and accept tape and, and load it from that. And, and uh, I was the first person to actually get it working, to actually load a game because you had to get the volume settings just right and, 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 and everything. So, um, so I kind of adopted it from that point onwards and it became my little computer. And uh, my dad bought um, little programming books uh, to learn basic programming and uh, even Z80 assembler. And uh, I, I got into all that. So at a very early age, I was actually writing little programs in basic. Um, and uh, uh, but then as, as I kind of grew up, I, I didn't have a computer for a long time. And it wasn't until uh, sort of the later 90s that I, I eventually got a PC and started programming again. And do you remember any of the basic uh, programs that you made? Like uh, what what was uh, what what kind of interest did you have at that time? Um. It, it, it began with games. So I, I, uh, one of the very first ones I, I wrote was a game based off a TV show called Street Hawk, which I think only ran for about eight episodes or something before they cancelled it. And, and it was it was kind of like Knight Rider where you've got, um, it was the motorbike version of, of oh. that. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I had this game where you get the, the helmet camera view and you, 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 it has like a targeting reticle sort of on the screen and then you can shoot at things passing by as, you know as they cross a, went across the screen so that was that was my first attempt at, at programming and uh yeah um later on i, I think I, I looked at visual basic wrote something in that and, and i learned c programming c plus plus and um uh when i went to university then i started learning more java um and uh, at university, I did did a lot of things like uh, I wrote an email client with a full graphical user interface and uh, uh, wrote a, a 3D graphics engine, um, which which actually worked reasonably well, even though it was using uh, very poor su graphical support from Windows GDI. It, it, it did actually work quite well and uh, had different lighting systems and and so on. So it was it was pretty, pretty good. Um, and then from there, I went to enter the enterprise Java world and um, worked at various companies uh, on, on, on Java-based systems and uh, eventually ended up at, uh, uh, as a contractor writing um, iPhone software. Uh, and I took a contract uh, for a software company called Anaplan in, 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 based in Yorkshire back in 2009. And, and I still work there now. So it's, uh, it's been over 12 years and, <laughs> uh, 
And uh, from there, I've been doing front ends on, on web-based software. So JavaScript, HTML, CSS, um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, I've, I've been there for 12 years. It's amazing how uh, like your initial programs seem very graphical, uh, you know, with the, kind of like the little target and things going by to, to shoot at. And, and you're talking about uh, a 3D rendering engine. And, you know, now you're, you're working on very non-graphical things. I was just wondering if, if maybe you missed uh, working on, on, on graphical things. Um, I, I, yeah, I do a little bit. Um, uh, it, it, it was a big interest of mine for a while. Um, the, and the kind of interest sort of declined as, as the kind of games industry changed because it, it, you know, we, we ended up with very powerful game engines and, and a lot of the kind of low level graphics programming wasn't that important anymore. Um, so now you can use a game engine to do, to do most things. And, and so it's a very different world from, from when I got interested in it. Um, sort of back in back at the late late 90s and uh um but uh but yeah uh, I, I certainly in, enjoyed everything that i did that was graphical um uh, in my current job I, I did actually do a bit of graphics programming um probably about 10 years ago now when we were looking at creating a, a data grid component using the html canvas uh, and that was a lot of fun i enjoyed doing that we didn't end up using it in the end but it, it was a it, it was an interesting experiment. And you know, it's kind of amazing uh, how computing's really become uh, front and center stage. I think uh, most high schoolers now have to take some type of programming class. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, and and I've I've done some um, uh, classes as well for for a local school in York. Um, uh, where, where we hold it like a code club. I don't do it anymore, but I, I did it. I did it for a while, for about six or twelve months, um, and 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 that was really good. And, and use a, a piece of software called uh, Scratch to to actually graphically build your programs and animate things on the screen. And it's a lot of fun, and the kids love it. Uh, I mean, some of them do spend a lot of time just looking at pictures of Minecraft, and <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, the. the, the a few, a few of them really stood out as, you know, future programmers, you know, they really had um, some, some really creative abilities, you know, to, 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 to create little games and uh, interesting things, little quiz, yeah. quiz games and things like that. Yeah. That, that sounds awesome. I use Scratch a, a, a few times and it's amazing how you could just create something that's visually compelling and interactive, just, with just uh, literally a couple of lines of code. Yeah, yeah, and um, I think that's all it needs. You need something like that just to get you hooked, and then you can start looking at um, more sort of uh, uh, powerful programming languages and and, and platforms. Um, and and there's so much scope for for what you can do. I, th I think that's why it's a really uh, interesting, you know, career choice if you do go into into programming. Um, and it's obviously very popular. You know, it can it, it can be uh, quite a lucrative career choice as well. Um, so so it's it's uh, and certainly at times like this when you're in a pandemic and you're working from home, it's it's something that you can do. You don't need to go to an office. You know, you can do it all on your on your laptop. And it's uh, um, I mean, it's we're very lucky in that way. Um, any ideas on where computing is going, like? If you, 50 years from now, what do you think uh, the act of programming would look like? Um, in, in a couple of years, probably very much the same. Um, I, I mean, we, we've, we've, it, we've gone through various kind of innovations with programming languages and different styles of programming, different paradigms. Um, but the, 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 the rate of change can kind of slow down quite a bit. We kind of settled on sort of very um, kind, kind of, I, I, I would say fairly simple uh, technologies that have a uh, um, very imperative way of doing things. You know, you tell the computer, do this, then do this, then do that. And then if this is true, then 
do this, otherwise do that. It, it's a very simple logic and most people can understand that, they can get their heads around it and get a lot done with just some very simple building blocks. Um, and there's more, there's other, there's other paradigms as well, like functional programming. Um, we've had lots of things, AI based, like AI languages like Prolog and, um, uh, and you know, now we've, we've got machine learning as well. So it's another way to solve problems by training, uh, you know, uh, a neural network to, to, you know, give you answers. And, and so that there's a lot, a lot of different ways you can go. Uh, different styles of programming now um but uh but yeah i think it's just going to be now a sort of gradual evolution of that and yeah it is kind of interesting where it's less about trying to describe the behavior as opposed to creating training sets and just waiting for it to uh kind of emerge yeah yeah and and there's so much you can do and you, you only have to look at um some of the technologies now where um, I was playing with something on my phone, which put my face onto a, a movie. You know, I, I look like Thor, you know, out of the Avengers. <laughs> um, and, and, and that was quite fun. And, and it takes you know, a matter of seconds for it to, to actually produce this, you know, movie clip with your face on it animated and everything. Uh, and, and so, yeah, the applications that you can, they're coming up with for machine learning is pretty amazing. Yeah, now uh, I like these really um, extensive actors uh, aren't going to do any work other than just, uh, you know, contribute their face and their, their voice uh, and just a little sample so the computer can make the rest of it. And you have like these. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of scary because you can't believe what you see anymore. You know, you, you see a picture, you know, in it, on, on the internet or in the magazine or, um, you know, or, or you watch a, even a movie now, a, a movie clip, um, you can't believe what you see. It used to be that, you know, in magazines, they would just airbrush it so that they'd make people look better. You know, they'd hide all the blemishes and things like that. Uh, but now they, they can just completely steal someone's identity and make them do and say things that they didn't do. And, and, and that's quite scary. <laughs> we need to, figure out how to adapt to this new world where all this kind of media, it, it could be complete fantasy, completely made up. And, um, but it, it does have practical uses as well, like you say, um, you know, for entertainment purposes, it's, uh, it's uh, very useful. Um, you, can, you can do things that would normally be too dangerous or impossible um, and it looks realistic, so. And, and then you have, uh you know, the, the 10 year old watching that movie going, oh, look, they could do that in the movies. And then they try doing it and that's when you really start running into trouble. I know, well, well I've, I've got a, a five-year-old and he believes everything that he sees. And uh, we, we have many conversations about, you know, which he thinks people are in, when he sees someone on the screen, he thinks they're in a different world. And mm -hmm. we, we have to explain that, no, they're, they're in the same world, um, a different part of the world, but, uh, and 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 uh, he's getting there eventually. He, he still believes that I went to New York and met Spider Man, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he's he's starting to learn learn how it all works. He's he's piecing it together. Wow! Yeah, no, no that it's a challenge um, to be in a situation where you believe everything, and then uh, perhaps you move to a situation where you believe nothing. Uh, how can you get to the right balance of believing the right things? I mean, how, how does one actually figure that out? I'm not sure you can, you know, it's, um, you start questioning your own sanity, don't you? It's, uh, you know, what is real anymore? Um, but uh, yeah, um, I think it, you just kind of, I don't know, learn to adapt to that kind of uncertainty, I think. Um, uh, and, and I think that's generally what we need to do now with technology is, you know, it's, there's a lot of change. There's been a lot of change with, you know, with, with the whole technological revolution and, and, you know, the way things have accelerated. Um, and, uh, you know, we just need to learn to how, how to adapt to it and learn from it, learn from our mistakes and, and, uh, um, yeah, 
it's it's a strange time to be around i must i must admit you know, when when the truth and evidence is also fluid i guess mm. yeah yeah and um i mean uh, what it's what's really i've noticed a lot recently with the social media is how polarized everything is and how easily influenced and manipulated people are in general the population and by by media by articles uh, and now and now by social media um and it, it's it's uh it's quite toxic it's it's worrying you know there's there's a you know you always uh, when when you've got anonymity uh it, it seems like people are totally different you know and, and and you see this online and and they uh you know they, they make statements that don't appear to be based on facts but um on their own perception of things i guess and what the outcome that they want they, they will say say something is true just to get the outcome that they want um uh, and you see that a lot uh online and I, I, again that's something that we need to learn how to adapt to and there's um it seems that these days you, you don't need to be able to back up anything that you say. You can just say it and say, this is true. Um, you don't need to provide backup. And um, half the population will believe you and the other half won't, but that's mm -hmm. all you need. Um, you know, so it, we're talking matters of percent, aren't we? If, you, if you're trying to win a, win a, win a, a poll, you only need 51% or whatever. And uh, you know, it, it, you don't need to win everyone over. So, so you can just say things, you know, make stuff up, uh, see what works, uh, see what hits, uh, you know, strikes a nerve with people and, you know, to, to get your desired outcome. And, and I, I see a lot of that now in the, in the world we live in. You just have to do it with conviction. <laughs> yeah. It, it, people who have a lot of confidence uh, seem to, infectious and, and exactly exactly yeah yeah um and it, it is you know a lot of that is kind of um demonstrating that confidence now being able to sell yourself online um and influence people and, and we hear that a lot now about people being influencers um it's, it's just people that can be confident that go up in front of people on youtube or, or wherever and spread that spread their message and uh, whether it's to sell products you know sponsors you know guitars i mean i, I watch youtube videos and end up buying guitars that i never planned to like five minutes before you know it's like i've gone and bought another guitar what have i done it's because yeah. i watched a video that someone said it was really good you know and yeah it, it it's 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 it is a sort of a scary thing really you have to you have to always be vigilant oh, where do you think that's gonna lead us to it doesn't seem like a good place <laughs> no no i don't i don't think it is uh, you know we we consume so much now and and obviously that has an impact on the world on the environment and 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 everything and um it, it's this this is how the world works now this is how people make a living and it's how you know the economy works you know we have we have to consume things and people have to produce things and and uh yeah i, I think the older i get the less even though you know i can afford guitars now whereas i might not have been able to in my younger years i i, I am less bothered about material things uh generally um you know i i don't see as much you know value in obtaining things as, as i might have done when i was younger when you could when you couldn't afford those things um but but what what i don't like is that the influence that media has on young people because they all want the latest phones the latest ipads latest gear for whatever their hobby is um and, and they can they almost kind of expect it because their friends have it and um it, yeah it's very different from when from when I, I i know it sounds like i'm an old person now talking about the old days but you know it's very different from when i was young where we, we just didn't have as much stuff and i remember being young and my grandparents and parents saying the same thing you know but it's obviously it's clearly young people 
get a lot more material things now and they expect to have that because other people do and the more that more social media is they see other people on the internet who have these things and so they want them as well they naturally want them whereas in the past you would only have your sort of small peer group your friends uh, and it would only be if your friend had something that you might take an interest and want it as well but now you just look on youtube and and you see so there's so much stuff you know um but uh i i think there's something nice about um just having a few things and making the most of something you know working with it with working with a set of limitations and um you know not trying to to consume too many things you know it's like me with the guitars <laughs> If only I had that guitar, then I'd be able to play better or something or play this other song or, yeah. But uh, yeah, I try, try to avoid that sort of mindset and just make do with what I've got. I remember a quote that goes something like, uh, the key is not getting what you want, but wanting what you have. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's very true. And, and um, I, It'd be nice if the rest of the world thought the same it just it just feels like you know at the moment it's you know it's very very different um, but i mean we have companies that are actually their entire business model is around exploiting this behavior and making it happen mm -hmm. and engineering it and yeah uh, that type of thing yeah exactly i mean i mean that's really how facebook and and other companies make their money most of their money is by uh, engineering um, the, the the kind of uh, influencing people to 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 go out and buy things. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure that's the best invention the human race has ever come up with. To be honest, I think the communication aspect is great. The ability to um, get your message out there to be heard. Um, no, no one's ever had that power in the past. You know that. You'd have to try and get an article in the newspaper or um, do a press release or something, you know, but now you can just tweet it on Twitter, you know, and, and people will, will, will read it and it will spread. Um, so it's very, yeah, now it's very easy to get a message out there. Uh, only if it excites them or engages them somehow, which means that the, <laughs> the, the middle statements, you know, they're not, they're not retweetable or affordable. It has to be some extreme thing that, oh my gosh, this is so yeah. unbelievable. You've got to see this. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And there's so, so many of these kind of uh, uh, words now to, to, to say how great something is. You know, uh, uh, I can't even keep up with them. There's new ones every day. But, um, uh, but yeah, it, it I see that a lot on YouTube, which is why I end up buying the guitars because you know they keep talking about how great they are, and then you get in. It's, well, yeah, it's okay. It's another guitar. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not changing. It's not life changing. <laughs> I keep using that as an example because that's obviously what's hanging on the wall behind me. But um... <laughs> um, I, yeah, I've, I've ran into uh, two groups of people who. Uh, you know, they really function based upon belief more than evidence. Um, uh, one group is Apollo deniers, people who say that, you know, we never landed on the moon. And, uh, you know, they point to this and that. And, you know, I get asked questions like, what do you think about these people that say we didn't go to the moon? Um, and I, I wonder, I, I, I like to find out if people in 1969, whenever they actually landed on the moon, I get the feeling that no one really doubted it at the time, you know, that everybody thought it really happened and it, i feel like it's a relatively uh something that happened a decade or two after um they land on the moon that that really started getting any type of, of traction i was wondering if you come across anybody who, who's like that no no not to that extreme i mean i i, I know um the people that believe the earth is flat and that we didn't land on the moon and and, and they strongly appear to us to strongly believe that. And, and, and now we have not quite the same, but along those lines, we, we have people that think that um, COVID-19 is a big conspiracy 
um, and uh, you know they, they they don't even believe that the people that died from COVID really did die from it. They they think they, it was just put down as that, um, and and that may be true to some extent, but um, to think that the whole thing is a big conspiracy is very very far fetched and. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know why some people do take these really far-fetched points of view and um, really extreme points of view uh, that you know that don't seem to have any scientific grounding or very little scientific grounding. Um, uh, so I, I mean, in terms of the the moon landings, uh, nineteen I was born in nineteen seventy three, so I missed it by about four years. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I kind of grew up knowing that there were conspiracy theories around it, um, and I think films are made about that. And uh, did I ever believe that it was a conspiracy? No. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, but I've, I've never actually encountered somebody who who believed it themselves. I believe so. It's the same with the flat Earth. The flat Earthers, I've never encountered one yet. <laughs> um, I, I don't see how you can, you know, with with the evidence available. Uh, I mean, you don't have to go far to look for evidence about, you know, the Earth is round, yet they still believe it's flat. <laughs> I had, uh, I did run into a flat earther whenever I was visiting Mexico City. I, I just interviewing people on the street and a guy was there teaching a judo class and uh, he was flat earther, but he even said that people in judo, apparently there's a lot of them are, are big conspiracy believers type thing. So if there's any judo classes around you, that might be a good source for flat earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think my body would hold up to doing judo. So. <laughs> I, I used to do martial arts, but, um, but no, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you, obviously if, if you um, go to go to any kind of social gatherings or clubs and things like that, you'll probably run into people. Um, uh, I mean, I'm only likely to run into people um, who I work with, to be honest, uh, uh, and a lot of them are very scientifically minded, they, they um, probably less likely to, to be flat earthers. <laughs> But uh, but I know it takes all sorts, you know. I'll let everyone have their have their opinion and their beliefs. <laughs> well, it would be good to have some type of uh, universal framework uh, by which we kind of process and uh, come to some type of conclusions about the world. You know, I mean, it's like uh, how do you convince each other if you're if if anything can be equally valued? Yeah, I mean, we, we could build a massive AI that just makes all the decisions for us and make sure that it's always the right decision. Um, that would be one way to do it, um, if we could develop such a thing, and then just take the human equation out of it. <laughs> yeah, just have something that looks at all the facts and computes the right result. Um, but uh, yeah, the... the um, there's always, and it's like coming back to the whole social media thing. It's 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 quite interesting how polarized everyone's points of view are on on all kinds of subject matters. Um, that uh, yeah, I'm am amazed really that you know we we managed to get stuff done. You know, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> just you know, in, in all kinds of endeavors, really. Um, you know, if, if, if people have such widely differing points of view, uh, how do we ever agree on anything and get things done, make decisions and um, get, get sort of any sort of consensus? But um, there has to be, there has to be uh, some kind of process in place to, to do it so that we can move forward and find, find something that will work for, for everyone. Um, I think if, we, if it, everything was a Twitter poll, we would never get anything done. Yeah. Well, um, you know, uh, the last moon landing was 1972, so you missed that one by a year. I missed it by three years, uh, just uh, <laughs> slightly longer. <laughs> um, but uh, the next one uh, we'll both be here for, uh, 
in the next few years, uh, NASA should be putting astronauts back on the moon. And I was wondering if you had heard about this. Only because you mentioned it. Um, I, I, hadn't, I don't think I'd heard of it before. I mean, I, I, I probably sort of in the back of my mind, I've been aware that um, NASA were looking at this again, but in terms of time scales and details, uh, probably not, not, not that aware. I didn't realize it was so soon. Um, and, and I believe that, are they planning to, to do a manned mission to Mars as well in uh, some point later? Uh, they definitely have talked about it. Uh, it it's not credible uh, at this point. It's not like they're designing and building habitats mm. and ships and that type of thing. But uh, the moon thing is way more credible at this point. Uh, yeah. they, they're actually going to test uh, the rocket and the capsule that would take the astronauts around the moon in a few months. Um, and then in a couple of years, they'll be sending uh, four astronauts around the moon. And then uh, hopefully in a year or two after that, they'll actually send them uh, down to the surface. So. And, and, and what will they do when they, when they get there? Um, well, uh, hopefully they'll take a look around. <laughs> <laughs> like some rocks, yeah. <laughs> What would they do? What's the value of uh, sending humans to the moon is, is always uh, kind of a question, especially whenever you got robotic missions that are mm. cheaper and, and uh, less, um, less risky, or at least uh, if they do fail, um, it, it's less of headlines. You know, people are like, oh, you lost so much money, but always going tragedy, tragedy. Um, I mean, I I'm, I'm sure, sure there's still a lot we can learn, especially about the technologies that we developed to do this you know obviously you need to test these things out you need to refine them uh, improve them uh, try and do everything quicker more economically and there's there's lots we can learn from from the act of landing people on the moon uh, to to improve that and make it easier and safer and everything um but um yeah i mean uh, would they be looking at ways to to have people stay there for long periods of time, um, like on the International Space Station, uh, conduct experiments there over a, over a lengthy period. Is, are those the kind of things that they are exploring? Yeah, I yes, those things, as well as uh, apparently there's uh, water ice that's frozen uh, in these permanently shadowed areas. Um, you know, is there some way to get that? access to that i'm not sure we would send mm. an astronaut into those areas to uh <laughs> you know that, that may not be uh, uh be advisable but um yeah you know i i think a lot of it starts out with like what's your vision for the future and then you sort of look at what are the activities that get you closer to that future and support that future and I think if people's vision for the future is that humanity goes on just only on the earth, uh, like it's always done, then mm. it's really hard to justify uh, human space flight. But, you know, if your vision is humanity branching out into the rest of the solar system beyond, yeah. it seems like these steps are essential to, to sort of literally taking the first steps towards that vision. And, you know, who's to say, um, either vision is, is, is better than the other. I mean, it's, it feels like the one that has an unlimited future is better than the one that's contained. Um, but I, I was wondering what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I, I think obviously there's, there's lots of things you could spend money on. Yeah, we could invest money in it. Um, and you know, we've got all sort, sorts of issues um, with the environment with uh, production of energy how to do that cleanly and and um, sustainably and there's all kinds of things but i think we always have to um look beyond that and and try to break through any you know break through our boundaries and look beyond and um try and find new discoveries you know we, we need to be adventurous and uh, as well so certainly there's going to be a balance but um, it's not all about problem solving. It's not like, oh, we've got this problem. We need a solution. Let's go fix it. Sometimes you need to do things to just learn for the act of learning so that, you know, at some point you can apply that learning, you know, in, in a practical way. And, and I'm sure that 
you know, becoming like a kind of multi-planet sort of species would be, um, it's obviously a long-term, uh, you know, endeavor to, to try and make that happen. But uh, I mean, that, that could have its uses, you know, you know, you know, if there's another extinction event that we detect happening, like another meteor or something like that, then, you know, it would give us options. And if we didn't do this, then we wouldn't have any options. And, and so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm personally welcome that we continue trying to explore beyond the bounds of our planet and, and look at what we can do and, and to develop the technologies to enable us to do that. Um, so uh, I think it's very exciting. I think it's very interesting. Uh, and I would hope that at some point there would be a payoff and, and you know, it would actually have practical usage as well. Yeah, and indeed, but uh, sometimes just the adventure is enough, you know, just the, mm. just the thought that humanity is actually expanding out into the rest of the universe, maybe as a, a psychological safety valve that helps us to, um, you know, a lot of people in Europe, whenever, uh, after we started having settlers in North America, I understand mm. that a lot of them, uh, just the thought that they could go, you know, if they... Uh, yeah maybe helped a little bit yeah i mean i look at what we've done in such a short space of time uh you know over the last 60 60 years or so uh, and it, it's pretty amazing really that you know if you can apply you, you can apply yourself for that short amount of time and you know land people on the moon um think what you could do maybe in you know a couple of hundred years time or you know it's um it's it's hard to imagine what where we will be then but if certainly if we if we don't try and push these boundaries and be adventurous then you know it's it's you know it's, nothing's going to happen and and the kind of problems that we uh seem to have at the moment we don't know what's going to happen with those as well you know like with population we, we were worried about population explosion and now we're worried about birth rates decreasing and everyone's getting old but nobody's working you know and and, and there's the other all these other kind of issues and where do, where are we going to get all the food you know to to feed everyone and all the water you know it's there's all kinds of things to worry about on this planet um uh and we can't really predict everything you know that's going to happen with all of those things so we, we, you know, we have to try our best in, in all of these areas. And, and I think that includes, you know, space exploration and, and trying to push beyond Earth and, and, and you know, le learn how we can survive on other planets. I think that would be uh, pretty amazing. I mean, it, I'd like to, you know, obviously see some progress in, in our lifetime. I think it could you know, obviously go on a lot longer than that, but, um, and we'll get much further out into the solar system. Uh, but, um, but yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to see some more progress again. Uh, I, I would have liked to have been around in 1969 to, to see them land on the moon and, and to understand the, you know, the significance of that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, maybe, maybe we'll get something similar again. <laughs> um, have you been following, uh, SpaceX at all and their development and uh, Starship. Uh, well, I've, se I've seen some 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 of it, yeah, um, but I, I I don't follow it closely. But uh, um, I, I find it quite interesting that there is this kind of race going on at the moment to 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 do you know space tourism and 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 uh, move into the area and, and to get back into kind of high speed travel as well, you know. Um, since they got rid of Concorde, uh, you know, there are other benefits as well to going up into, into space. And, um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's fascinating. It's amazing. And I, I always love to see new technologies and advancements in that area. Now, you know, um, uh, supersonic uh, airplane travel is uh, coming back. Uh, United has done this deal with uh, Boom to actually um, you know, I think buy something like 50 supersonic jets or something. 
Oh wow! Okay, is it is it going to be like another Concord? Uh, it's it should be as fast. Looks slightly different. Um, yeah. Hopefully, um, hopefully some safety improvement. Yeah. Yeah, you you would hope so. <laughs> Although recent recent history with <laughs> Boeing and that you you, you know recent track re records not been great, but. <laughs> That's right. You always think as time goes on, things will get safer and better, but uh, <laughs> there's always scope for someone to slip up. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what Elon likes to say, too, is that things getting safer and better is not a function of time. It's a function of people actually working on it. Uh, it's a function of effort. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the time clicks on regardless if you're doing anything about it or not. It's, it's Do you have yeah. people actually working on that problem? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if we're not working on it, it's not going to get better, is it? <laughs> Absolutely. Not really. Yeah. Well, if it was uh, safe and affordable, would you take a trip to space? Uh, yes. Yeah, I would. Um, if I could afford it, obviously, like you say. Um, I think, you know, it, it's just such an opportunity, like how many people that have ever lived would have ever done anything like that you know it's um yeah why not <laughs> of, of course whenever it becomes affordable uh the number of people who have done such a thing probably be very significant uh, you know it might be in the hundreds of thousands millions uh, yeah. that type of thing um how far would you go uh just to orbit uh to the moon would you immigrate to mars uh i well, it's it's hard to know because it all depends on circumstances, doesn't it? That's that's a complete life change, and um, I think under certain circumstances, and yeah, I probably would if the opportunity came up. But under my current circumstances, probably not. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't rule it out. But uh, it, as I say, it depends on circumstances. No, I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be totally against it, but uh, I mean, we, we we can get a pretty good idea of what these places are like now, can't we? With uh, current technologies, and, you know, with landing rovers on the, on Mars, and you know, we get some pretty good pictures. And you know, the um, movie The Martian, we can see what that's like. So you can get an idea without having to go there. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, it, I mean, that it depends. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think going to Mars would be like uh, COVID lockdowns cubed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if, if you go there, it's like, yeah, there's, I've done everything else. There's nothing else left for me, but I'll, you know, I'll go into another, you know, completely another new planet. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. So let's, let's do that. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it, what, how long does it take? About two or 300 250 300 days or something to get to mars i think uh five months uh so i guess that puts yeah. it about 150 days or so yeah 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 i mean that's doable well i mean the yeah. thing is you don't you don't get there and you're like hey i'm on a, a nice free planet i get to run around <laughs> you're still in the craft <laughs> you know every time you go out you're in a suit you know <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, some of us like like doing things in isolation. Anyway, <laughs> I've got my own office, I play my guitars, got my drum set. You know, if if I, if I could take all that with me. <laughs> yeah, but you you probably wouldn't be uh, by yourself. Space would be very uh, scarce. You probably have two or three people uh, with you all the time. Yeah, yeah, I I, I can imagine where it would be. Yeah. Um, Maybe when things have advanced a bit more and we've actually got, you know, proper amenities and living spaces and and all of that. Um, but yeah, I mean that 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 would be uh, you know a long way from <laughs> where we are now. Isn't it? It's probably not going to be in our lifetime that you know that we're going to have that kind of situation. I don't know. I think the way Elon's going. Um... We really could have a million person city on Mars by 2050. 2050, okay. All right.
I mean, you and I would only be, you know, less than 80. Yeah. Yeah. And again, depending on circumstances, maybe that's the last thing that you want to do. Yeah. <laughs> and like, Go to Mars it. and end it there, you know. It, it, as I say, it depends on circumstances. It, that could be quite appealing. You know, maybe you've had enough. It, it, this might not be a very nice place to live in 2050. Uh, and so, you know, you just don't know. You just don't know. Um, yeah, I wouldn't rule it out. I know we've uh, talked about a lot of things, but uh, is there anything that you wanted to cover or, or did you have any questions for me? Um, well, just get, get your opinion on it. I mean, you've, you've said a bit already. Um, uh, where, where would you like to see things go ideally in terms of uh, you know, space exploration and advancement in that area? Yeah, I mean, I'd love to see humanity um, kind of refocus its energies on, on exploring and understanding the universe instead of kind of this, I, it's like having a brother and a sister in a, a toy store, a toy store fighting over a low bitty toy when they're surrounded by options. <laughs> I, that's the picture of humanity that i see <laughs> it's just like why are we why are we in uh, wasting our energies like this you know it's like you know we have what seven billion eight billion people uh and which you know it seems like you could do a whole bunch of i mean look at all those brains and those minds yeah. and that potential yeah. but you know, it doesn't matter how many people you have pushing on a rock if they're pushing against each other. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, I, I feel like um, uh, well, even though in the past we had uh, fewer people, it, it seemed in some ways that maybe we were, were, were pushing in a, a similar direction. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I hope we go to the moon. I hope Elon successful the Starship. I hope there are thousands of other people like Elon that emerge, that are like, you know, you know, kind of pick up the tar torch and take it in further directions. I mean, whenever you look at how small the the Earth is compared to the solar system, you know, it's just like itsy bitsy. But then whenever you look at how small the solar system is compared to the galaxy, it's just mm -hmm. like whoa. And then whenever you consider it, there are literally billions of observable galaxies each with this many stars you're just like i mean the universe yeah, that, is so yeah, huge mind-blowing yeah you know i mean how do we get people thinking about that uh, you know one big problem i have is uh, um uh, a lot of people here are getting investment accounts and uh you know trying to figure out which stock to put i wish they would get telescopes and microscopes and spend time observing nature and, and uh, trying to draw conclusions and that type of yeah. thing. Seems like that'd be a far more use of human, uh, uh, you know, kind of energy yeah. than, than trying to um, be a, a better asset allocator. <laughs> yeah, well, we're always trying to encourage people into the sciences, you know, it's um, like part of when I was a STEM ambassador doing the, the code club is to kind of talk about what kind of things we've worked on. And I've worked on, obviously I've worked on computers for a long time, but also on more sort of chemistry and, and things like that back when I was in textiles uh, uh, as a textile dyer. And um, th there's, there's a lot of really interesting, fun things you can do. I mean, some, some of those areas, they don't always provide the best career options, which is sad in a way, but um uh, but yeah, but try, trying to bit, just build that interest in young people so that they can pursue those kind of careers. Um, uh, but there's probably a lot more that we can do. Um, uh, and there's so much more we can learn still. We just got to keep pushing those boundaries, haven't we? That's, that's it. Absolutely. It's like, uh, you know, we should all be working on like some solving some problem or figuring something out. And you know, yeah, it doesn't matter how simple or basic it is, right? I mean, it could be, you know, what's the best way to preserve pickles? I don't know. But, you well, know, yeah, just, yeah. 
there's some you, 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 you can you can look at something like that and you, you know you might discover that some completely you know tangential thing that you know you never even thought of by just you know but it's just unless you're actually looking and trying things and and, and trying to learn and, and making ex you know creating experiments and then you're not going to learn anything um you have to be doing something and uh yeah, the, something completely unexpected could be discovered as long as you're looking. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, and looking and observing and thinking. I mean, if we could give people, you know, forget about what the answer in the back of the book is. You know, just mm. uh, if you just have the problem, how would you go about actually solving it? And how would you know you had the right answer? I mean, those are like fundamental questions that we could just, uh, I mean, and I think Google, uh, you know, being able to Google stuff, uh, has really caused us to to not exercise those muscles you know it's like yeah. I don't need to think about anything I just type in the question in Google I get you know 40 answers I choose the one that I like or whichever yeah. one helps me win the bet yeah forget yeah. forget which one's true <laughs> yeah and, and, and that, it that is quite detrimental isn't it you know having having all of that it, it's good in some ways but it, it stops you from it makes you lazy you know, it makes people lazy because because all they do is have to, you know, use a search engine to to find something. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's there's plenty of stuff that isn't in the Google search engine that hasn't been, doesn't have good answers yet, and it's finding those things and just you know someone having a go to 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 dis, you know to discover those answers really. Absolutely. Mm. It's funny if you uh, type in to Google search, um, you know, why do astronauts float? And um, an article comes up and it starts out with astronauts float because there's no gravity in space. But if you read the article, it says that's a common misconception. <laughs> and the real reason that astronauts float is because, uh, you know, they're in free fall. You know, they're, they're constantly falling towards Earth. But uh, so... Here's an article that actually does go into uh, sort of the actual truth of the matter, but it leads off with the, the misconception, which is what you see in the Google results. So yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, if, if you don't like actually take the step of reading beyond the first few lines, uh, you could walk away convinced. That, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now a lot of, Articles have TLDRs on, don't they? So you can you can just write read the one one or two liner message um, and and get the gist of the entire article. But not all of them are doing that. So like you say, it, sometimes it can be very misleading. Um, and and like on that point, there's so much clickbait out there as well. Someone will put out something really kind of controversial as is the as the title of the article or the video, and it could give you a complete misconception about what the point of that article is just to make you want to you know look at it uh, you know to click on it um but if all you're doing is skimming through reading these things you can you can get completely the wrong idea <laughs> now you used a term uh that i've seen a couple of times but i don't know what it means tldr too long didn't read oh too long didn't read ah <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> you could google that and it's it'd probably tell you <laughs> but could i believe the results no, <laughs> yeah, well that's it <laughs> can you believe me i might be wrong <laughs> well oh but yeah well <laughs> I, I that's interesting tldr tldr <laughs> yeah people use it from time to time now in in the you know, even in, in any sort of form of text chat, you know, you, you might see a TLDR just to give you a summary of uh, what it is. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just one of those kind of modern, modern things, isn't it? You have, you have to learn all these new meanings. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Well, uh, Jason, I better let you go, but thank you so much for uh, talking to me today. Thanks, it was fun. Yeah, been a pleasure. Well, um, talk to you soon. All right. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.